Yay, it's working. Um, so a little bit of what to expect today. We've kind of broken it up into easy and tangible topics. We're going to start off with mindset. So just even going, entering this idea of, of a partnership and working with your dog. How do you kind of shift the way we're thinking from traditional dog training or adventuring into what is um, helpful in terms of thinking of embarking in this new experience with your dog? Then we're going to get into the training side of it. Michelle's going to touch on the mental or psychological training of your dog and yourself. Um, and then I'll talk uh, about the technical side. So how to stop, how to give commands, those sorts of things. Then we'll get into gear. We'll talk about what your dog needs, what you need. And then Jen's going to talk about dog care. She has a huge wealth of knowledge. Um, she's just going to take a very tiny piece of it to share today on what to watch for when starting out in the sport and continuing in the sport with your dog. And then we'll talk uh, briefly on trail etiquette and what our trail session will look like next week, the practical side. And then again, like I said, we'll open up for a question period. So if at any point anyone has a question, pop it in the chat and we'll, we'll address it at the end um, at the end of each of these topics. So we'll jump right in to mindset here. Um, so I know this is a photo of Michelle on a dog sled, but I think it really, really captures the exuberance and the joy and the fun and happiness that's happening on this team. And this is really the whole, if you take nothing else away from this clinic, the whole point of why we do this <clears throat> is to have fun, for your dog to have fun and for you to have fun. And if you're not having fun or your dog's not having fun, it doesn't mean you should quit or stop, but it means you need to reevaluate um, what you're doing, how you're doing it, and why you're doing it. So again, if if anything feels like it's quote unquote going wrong, take it back to, is it fun? If not, what can we do to try and problem solve and correct that? Because why do we do it if it's not fun for our dog or for us? So um, this photo is Michelle's first time running her own sled and Ripple, who you can see here with this big smile on her face, it's her very, very first time pulling a sled. And you can see how much fun they're having. And I would attribute that a lot to a lot of the groundwork that Michelle and Ripple put into um, pulling and running and having fun and the partnership that they have off of the trail as well. And we'll talk a lot about that today. It's not just about how do you get down a trail on skis with your dog, it's what sort of work you put into building your relationship and working with your dog both on and off the trail. And so um, there's a few kind of quotes and mushers that come to mind when I think every day as I'm training dogs and I'm in the dog yard, um, I think about these quotes every single day. And one comes from George Atla, who's a very famous musher in Alaska. He's a sprint racer. Um, recently passed and his his kind of most famous quote is that a dog never makes a mistake um, he's just a dog and he does what he does because he is a dog and thinks like a dog and it's you that makes the mistake because you haven't trained him to do what you want him to do when you want him to do it so if your dog's not doing what you think they should be doing it's not their fault it's because we haven't either laid the groundwork so that they know what to expect and what to do, or we haven't communicated clearly what we're expecting and when we expect it. So you can work on commands in your house, but it's not entirely fair to expect that your dog will then do the exact same behaviors on the trail. You need to bridge that gap and make that communication for them. So I think this quote, I think of it every single day when I might get frustrated, um, is that it's not their fault. They're just being dogs. And at the end of the day, whether you're running a dinner rod or playing in the woods, a dog is a dog is a dog. They just wanna play, they wanna feel valued and they wanna have connection. So it's never their fault. That's the first thing when we think about going into dog training. We need to learn how to communicate. The second quote I want to talk about is by Joe Henderson. He's known as the Malamute Man. He does huge solo month-long unsupported missions in the Arctic. He works with working lines of Alaskan Malamutes. And when he thinks about training a dog, his philosophy <laughs> is that when a dog discovers that his or her strength has a limit, they will accept this limit as the peak of their strength. However, if they do not know their limit and haven't ever discovered it, they will reach deep inside themselves and exhibit feats of strength that is beyond our comprehension. And the whole point of this is never push your dog so far that they realize they have limits. If they find their limit, they will start protecting that limit. 
if you build a bond and trust and they know you will always protect them and have their best interest in heart, they will give themselves wholeheartedly to whatever you want to do. But it's your job. It is a partnership, but you're also the manager in this. You want to make sure you're setting them up for success, you're communicating clearly, and that you're both having a lot of fun. And so another um, thing about this photo of Joe on this um, expedition that he did is you'll notice he's out skiing in front of his team. And I think this really shows that you need to understand what your dog's limitations are and know when maybe you have a dog that's really excited to pull you on a kick sled and it's or on skis and it's really exciting, but sometimes trail conditions are different. Um, you know, they're not feeling whatever excitement they are that day. It's under, it's learning how to read your dog and recognizing the conditions and the environment to say when you need to help, when they've got it all. And most importantly, that it's a partnership and it's not always just a one way your dog is doing this for you. You're doing it together and understanding that give and take and being able to communicate with each other um, and also advocating for your dog. And Michelle will talk a lot about that in her section. So one more thing I want to touch on, um, it's really, really easy, especially when people are getting started, we get posts and questions about this all the time, to look at someone else on the trail, especially if you look at Michelle and her um, purpose-bred sled dogs, or Jen and her very well-trained Denali dogs, or my sprint, you know, my yearling sprinting down the trail, to say, why isn't my dog pulling that hard? Why isn't my dog doing that? And there are a lot of things that play into this. Some of it we can help with motivating and teaching you how to communicate and harnessing the power your dog has. But at the end of the day, different dogs have different drive. And some of that is breed related, some of that is personality re related. And so Alyssa, you can go to our Facebook page and find this post, it's pinned at the top. She did a great post with great examples <clears throat> of different drive, different dogs with different drives. Sorry. But basically what she's saying is that different dogs will have different drive and it can be discouraging to see other people's dogs running when yours maybe won't or maybe they won't under certain situations or circumstances. And drive or a dog's willingness to pull or work will vary greatly from dog to dog. Um, most dogs around here, the Truckee area, aren't purpose-bred sled dogs. And so you might have a Malamute or you might have a Siberian, and you're like, but they're a northern breed. This is what they do. But understanding that there are also a lot of show northern breeds that have been bred for compa or, um, companionship. They've been bred for their looks. And that working intensity, that drive, um, that makes them really great pullers has been pulled out of them because it does not make really good house pets. And so you may have a northern breed, but it doesn't mean that's a given that they're going to have an intense drive. And you may have a breed like a German Shorthair Pointer, which wasn't bred for pulling a sled, but has incredible drive because that's part of their personality as well. So um, I think this just goes to show that drive varies across dogs, but in, at the end of the day, your dogs will love the snow and love the exercise. Um, and so just the point to get is to get out with your dog and have fun. And we're going to say that so many times today, but it really <laughs> is just about building partnership and having so much fun with your dogs. It's not to say you're not going to get frustrated or disappointed or bruised and battered, but at the end of the day, if you're having fun, that's what we're looking for. So key pieces to a positive mindset as we're entering this part, new partnership and activity with our dogs. Your dog is never wrong. You're just not communicating properly. Um, always finish having fun and wanting more. Never let your dogs know that they have a limit. It's your job to advocate for them and make sure they don't reach that limit. Drive the dog in front of you, not the one beside you or the one way out in front of you that you're chasing. And always make sure that you're having a really fun time, both your dog and yourself.